1790s to the late 1960s. Today I'm making parts for the bar pad lock, which is the, uh, the lock that they actually made. We get one here. It's a very simple lock. It's like a lockable bolt. It's got a couple of eyelets, so we don't need a fancy carpenter, anybody to fit it, anybody can fit one of these. If you haven't drilled some holes in the wood, you can actually fit a, a bar pad lock. So you make your eyelets up, poke your bar through the first hole, drop on your floating shackle, you can see there's an hole in the shackle, poke it through the second eyelet, then when we lock it into position, turning the key, you'll see a bolt fly across that hole. I'll drop the shackle in position, it goes through the hole in the shackle. And that locks everything together. So it's like a lockable bolt. Quite a good and effective one. Why they don't use them now, we don't really know. So I'm actually making the bar for the bar that lock today on the forge. So you can see it's a dead simple forging process. So we've got a point just to lead through the eyelids. We've got a flat on it so we can attach it to the lock case. And it's got a bend in it. So as a forging job, it's a nice little job. Nice and simple, a point, a flat and a bend. So if we start it off, we've got a bit of metal in the fire. We've got our double acting drillers. So if I pull the handle, it pulls the chain, that pulls up the bottom set of bellows and it forces all the air out of the, the bottom set of bellows. There's another one of these big wooden plates in the middle here where the double rivets are. And all the air from the bottom set gets forced through an hole in that fixed plate in the middle and there's a flat valve on it. The flat valve's covered in rabbit skin. And that makes a good seal to stop the air going back into the bottom set. So if I pump vigorously to start with, we put the top set up onto a cushion of air, then I can do a nice gentle action. And I've got a nice constant flow of air pumping through my fire, through the tweer and into the fire. And I keep a nice steady action. I had a little lad in here 10 minutes ago called Shay, and he, he was pumping the bellows for me and he got the fire this big in four or five minutes. It's going to be quite hot now, so it's getting up nice and hot. Okay, hot enough to wear. I've already got one with a bend and a flat on it, so I need to put a point on it. I'm going to cool the tail end off a bit, it's getting a little bit warm. It's called the Bosch. You know what it's called the Bosch? When you put a big hot bit of metal in there, it goes Bosch. <laughs> and that's why it's called the Bosch. So I'm going to cool it down so I can handle the one bit of bark. I ain't using tongs on the fire today. I'll poke him in, get him nice and hot. I've got another one here with a point already on, so I could put a flat, start putting a flat on him. And I've got another raw one that's just starting to get a little bit red. I'll put it in the darkness. And these start to get warm, ready to have something done to it. So just pump it up a bit, get it up on that cushion of air. You see, there's only one place the air can go, and that's out through the fire. Okay. We're using breeze on the fire to form a coke. Okay, do you want to try a bit? It's dead light, so it's had all the impurities took out of it. Okay, so what it is, this is the raw coal that they're using on the fires in the house that Ellen's cooking on the fire with. And what they do, this comes from the, this comes from the gas works. So Bentley up the road, they've got a gas works. And what it does, it's got its own railway, it runs 24 hours a day, the gas works. They've got two or three big cylinders in the gas works, they fill it full of raw coal. They light a fire under it. It gets hotter and hotter, and as it gets hotter, all the impurities start to dribble out of the raw coal. So you're getting tar for the roads and felt in your roofs. Useful product. Yeah, and lining the inside of a leather bucket. Yeah, so that you, you, you can make it waterproof. The other things you get off it, you get sulphur. Yeah, you know, sulphur, when I was a kid, you get a packet of flowers of sulphur, and you could dip your finger in it, stick it on an ulcer, and it would act as an antiseptic on your ulcer. Don't sell it anymore, but that's what they use it for, so yellow powder. At the top end of this cylinder, you get all the gases coming off, and this is exactly what they're lighting the gas lights in the house with. Okay, so, and as a byproduct, when the cylinder's burnt out, they light the next one, so they burn one out, load the other one up, so they, they can constantly run 24 hours a day. And, and the breeze is a byproduct, so it's a form of coke that you, that's a smokeless fuel that you can burn on your fire. The trouble with this breeze is it needs a forced draft to keep it running properly. 
But then if I've got a, a small kit to operate it for me, it can pump the bellows. But this will burn very hot. Mm. It'll burn three or four times hotter than the, uh, than the, the normal house coal. Okay, I've got a nice hot bit of bar now, so if I start putting a point on him, I think get a finished bar. It's about 1100 degrees, makes it nice and pliable now. Don't need to be a sharp point, just need to be a lead angle to lead through the eye bits in the bar paddle. Okay, that's pretty much finished. So I've got my flat on, I've got my bend on, I put my point on, start it straight and slightly. It's slightly wonky point on the end. A bit better. Stick him in the, uh, can you remember what it was called? Bosch. The Bosch. In the Bosch. Okay, start to warm the water up. There's the heat in the bar, acts like an element. There you go. One finished bar. Hello, come in, have a look round. This is the kitchen, the heart of the home, where lots of tasks were completed. And you see the roaring fire there? Well, that's because the fire was is absolutely every day of the year. It was the only way to cook your food. There's your little door over there. And also to have hot water. So it didn't matter what the weather was doing out there, your fire was lit. So, you could have your toast. Here's your toasting forks. Got a range of them. Some of them are extendable. Put your toast on, put your bread on. Toast in front of your fire, it's because it didn't drop in though, otherwise you'd lost it for good. So toast your, t toast, your uh, toast and have your hot butter on it. Or dripping, in fact, if you couldn't afford butter. Or a nice pint of it. Oh yes indeed. Now many uses for newspaper. You could read it. You could put it underneath your uh, uh, coal, ready to burn, to get enough heat to start burning the coal. You could make spills with it. If you were going to light your fire, you used a match. Once your fire was lit, you would use one of these for then light either your candles or your oil lamp or in fact your gas lamp. Or your pipe. Yeah, indeed. So you could knock the fire out and use it again and again until there was nothing left. Just a cheaper way of doing things. You could also, of course, use it to clean your windows. You'd scrumple it up, put vinegar on it and clean your windows with it. You could also use it for toilet paper. <laughs> yes, and the children's job would have been to cut it up into squares, put a piece of string through it and hang it on the back of the toilet door. One of the best mixing bowls in the country, paper was produced, that was back in season again now. Wonderful mixing for pastry, for cooking, wonderful. So, we was in this little house, in this little, in this little area, it was warm, comfy, what more did you want? And then they invented television and that put the top hat on everything. Yes. Hmm. But in the main, we lived a quite a comfortable life living in this room, living the way we do. And if you wander about the house, you'll see rooms with wallpaper. The hmm. wallpaper was extremely expensive, and so you knew the family had money. But often, there's a green, uh, green wallpaper in one of the bedrooms, probably coloured with arsenic. Not, not a very healthy option. Hmm. But a lot of different chemicals were used to colour your sweets. You had green uh, uh, arsenic. Uh, red was cochineal, cochineal. Uh, crushed insects, but also copper. And if you wanted black sweets, you could use soot. Why not? It was readily available. Mm -hmm. And we called a black country. Well, there are lots of reasons we call a black country, but one of them was that everybody had at least one coal fire burning. What was going up your chimney? Tons and tons of smoke. And what went up? Had to come down. Yeah. So you had smoke. So a gentleman called Ethan Blewett. American envoy uh, was coming to have a look at what this black country is all about. And he penned the name, this goddamn black country. Red by night and black by day. And the reason for that is that when they hung all the furnace doors, it shone from the clouds so you could read the paper in the light under the, under the stars. If you like. And of course, black by day, with all of the belching smoke that went from everybody, <coughs> this house to factories, foundries, mines. Everything was coal fire. And of course, in your pub, you were, the doctors had said, cough it up and spit it out. So in your pub, you'd got spittoons, exactly for that purpose. Mm. Of course, at the end of the night, when your aim was not all that good, 
There was sawdust on the floor to collect all the stuff that didn't go in the spittoons. Also, the blood if there was a fight, the beer that had been spilled, and the vomit if you were ill. So, at the end of the night, all the sawdust was swept out, burnt in the yard, and it started to fred. Stopped all that uh, contamination. It was the first hygiene. Mm. Sawdust. Same really? as you find in butchers. Yeah. Which you're going to say, all the butchers in these days and these days would have had floor loads of just sawdust. Mm. Soak up all the drinks.